Eureka! The story so far. All substances in all three states of matter are made up of little round things called atoms. In pure metals, all the atoms are arranged separately and individually. But in most common non-metals, liquids and gases, the atoms are bunched together into little lumps or molecules. And now, electrons. What's the smallest thing you can think of? A flea? Yes, that's pretty small. But if you put a flea under even the most powerful microscope in the world, you still wouldn't be able to see the molecules that the flea's made of, let alone the atoms that the molecules are made of. In fact, atoms are so incredibly tiny that from their point of view, you're an unbelievably enormous giant. That makes you feel pretty big, doesn't it? But if you look up at the night sky, you'll see that there are thousands of other worlds up there. From your point of view, they're no bigger than tiny pinheads. But from the point of view of someone on one of those other worlds... The planet Earth would look like a tiny pinhead. And you yourself wouldn't be visible at all, even through the largest telescope. It would be as if you were no bigger than one of the atoms in that flea. But just as there's a lot more to you than someone on another world might think, so there's a lot more to atoms than you might think. Scientists have tried to imagine what you might see if you could ever come face to face with an atom. Here's the simplest model that they've come up with. Your first impression might be that you'd just seen a ghost, since you could walk right through it. This is because the atom consists mainly of nothing at all. The phantom atom. The only more or less solid part of an atom is a little speck of matter right in the middle, rather like the tiny kernel of a gigantic hazelnut. In fact, that's just what scientists call this centerpiece, the kernel. Although they prefer to use the Latin word for kernel, which is nucleus. The rest of the atom is really nothing but a few other tiny specks of matter whizzing round and round. These are called electrons. And they're zipping around so fast that they appear to form the layers of a sort of shell round the nucleus. That's how atoms can give the illusion of being solid spheres, although they're nothing of the kind. You might get a feeling for this if you imagine that the nucleus were a tiny little boy. And the electrons were tennis balls on the ends of long pieces of string. Now if the boy whirls the tennis balls round his head fast enough, you'll think that you're looking at a large solid sphere. Instead of just a small boy playing a rather complicated game of ball. The pieces of string are needed, of course, to stop the tennis balls from flying off in all directions. In the same way, the nucleus of the atom needs its own pieces of string to stop the electrons from flying off in all directions. Only in the case of atoms, the string is a force of attraction pulling each electron towards the nucleus. Some atoms have many layers of electrons. Other atoms are very simple and have only one electron layer. But however many layers of electrons atoms may have, they all consist largely of emptiness. So if ever you're walking along the street, not looking where you're going, and... Think of it this way. That lamppost is only a lot of molecules, which are only a lot of atoms, which are only a lot of almost nothing at all. So what are you complaining about? 